140% for the year, which is phenomenal with just a one to two. Now we don't need to be targeting these massive one to 20 trades, one to fifties and stuff like that. All right, because a lot of trades like that, whilst they do happen, they're far and few between, and you are likely going to take a lot of losses in the meantime, and it can be very damaging for psychology. Hello, in today's video, we are going to be covering the DRS strategy. Now, this is a question that I've had quite a lot, asking for some more information and details about how the strategy works. And today we're going to be doing a dive into the DRS strategy and giving a in-depth overview of how the strategy works. So without further ado, let's dive in. Right, so before we actually start back testing and showing how the strategy works, there's some key points that we need to understand before we move forward. So first off, we can see in the top right here, we have a set of rules. Now, the DRS is a rule based strategy. We need to follow the rules in order to make sure we stay consistent within our trading. So to start with, the trading windows we'll be looking at are all in UK timings and we'll be looking at LTW, which is London trading window, at 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the morning. And then the New York trader window, which is NTW, is 3 o'clock in the afternoon till 4 o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Now, this is where there is a couple of similarities with the DRS and the silver bullet strategy. There has been a bit of inspiration from the silver bullet strategy with the DRS, but there is quite a few key differences. And the fact that we are using just one time frame, we are using fair value gaps for our entry, we are not using a wide range of confluences in order to come up with a trade setup because the silver bullet strategy can be very subjective. And that's something I wanted to completely eradicate with the DRS strategy. We will have a minimum and maximum stop loss sizing of five and 20 pips. So the smallest stop loss we will use is five pips. The maximum size is going to be 20 pips. We will only be targeting a risk reward ratio of one to twos, nothing more than that. And the only time we will close the trade below a one to two is if we are still in a trade at nine o'clock at night, UK time, then regardless if it's running in profit or a loss, we will close that trade to avoid the widened spreads during daily rollover. Now, the only time we're going to be setting stop loss to break even is if the trade is in profit after six o'clock in the evening. So before we start diving into the actual charts themselves, there's a couple of things that we need to establish and how the strategy will work. So let's start off with this image over here. Now, this represents a fair value gap, and these lines here represent the trading window. So hypothetically, let's say this is the eight o'clock start, and this is the nine o'clock finish of the trading window. All three candles that form a fair value gap must be inside that trading window. We cannot have candle two of the fair value gap being the first candle within inside the trading session. All three need to be inside the trading window. Now there is a caveat when it comes to UK 100, but we won't be talking about that here today. We're just gonna be focusing purely on EURUSD. Now these images over here to the left, these represent trading sessions. So the Asia session, or maybe the London session, or even the New York session. But what we're going to be looking at is how price has been behaving in the prior session in the build up to when we are trading within our trading window. So let's assume that this gray box here is our Asia session. If we was to have the Asia session trending downwards, for example, and price once the Asia session closes continues trending, we will look to continue trading with that trend. Now, on the flip side of that, if we see price still trending to the downside, maybe the upside doesn't really matter. If we see a sweep of the Asia low or the Asia high, and then we see price displacing and pushing to the upside, creating a change of character around here, we can start looking for a long trade and start going with a new trend. Now there's a couple of key characteristics that are different between these two is, as we can see, Asia has come into a close at this point, Frankfurt is opening, and we are seeing Frankfurt trending below the Asia low, and then London has opened at this time here, eight o'clock in the morning, and we are still trending lower. So this is one of those situations where we look to go with the trend, providing there is no imbalances within this price action that could attract price back to the upside to refill something inside that fair value gap. So we will look at a few examples of these as we go forward. 
Right, so before we start cracking on with the back testing and showing you how the strategy works, if you are going to back test this, I strongly recommend using FX Replay because you can back test a very wide range of data all the way back to 2003. Whereas TradingView, you will be limited by a couple of months depending on your subscription plan with them. So before we get started, we will be using the session indicator by FX Replay. Okay, this is very useful to identify where the sessions are. So feel free to pause the video right now and have a look at the settings I have here. Next indicator we'll be using is the silver bullet by FX Replay. These here are the settings that I use. We will only be using the first window and the second window. Now, please be aware that this indicator is hard coded to UTC minus four. Now, everything we are doing with this strategy is in London time. So even when the clocks change back or forwards, we will still be going by local time in the UK. So if you are back testing over the period of daylight savings, where there's a, a misalignment with the UK and the US, you would need to then manually draw your fair value gaps and your trading windows until everything is realigned this is something that does trip up a lot of traders including myself every single time it happens so these are those settings i'll scroll down you can see some more of these settings and you can pause the video and copy these if you so wish now one key point before we then crack on is why i have my session indicators set at specific hours so i have the asia session starting at 10 o'clock uk time at night this is when the daily rollover starts and i then have the asia session finishing at seven o'clock in the morning now the asia session doesn't actually technically close until around about nine o'clock because i believe it's tokyo that is still overlapping ever so slightly with london but why do i have my session ending at seven o'clock in the morning well quite simply it's a visual indication that frankfurt is now opening in the european union and then we have this gap here where London is now opening at eight o'clock in the morning and it helps keep the charts nice and tidy. Now I then have London closing here at one o'clock in the afternoon. Now we all know London does not close at one o'clock in the afternoon. It closes a lot later than that. But this again is a visual representation for myself where the New York session is opening. Again, this is just to keep my charts as clean and as minimal as possible. If you wish to use the full session ranges on the indicator, then feel free to do so. It will not change the outcome of how the strategy will work. Like I said, this is just to make things a bit clearer and easier to see on the charts. So let's dive into it. Let's have a look. Right, so we can start with May the 1st this year, and we've got a nice downtrend here on the Asia session. So what we're going to be looking at is how does this session open? So like I said, we need all three candles for the fair value gap to be inside this trading window so the very first moment we're going to be able to take a trade is around about 20 past 8 in the morning is likely when the first trade is likely to be triggered so we can open up the trading session by a couple of candles and we can get a feel for how london is now opening okay so we have a fair value gap here but note that candle one of this fair value gap is outside the trading session so this fair value gap is void we will not be using this so let's open up the session a little bit more. Okay, we now have a fair value gap just here. It's quite small. It looks a bit insignificant, but it's still valid. It's still there. We're keeping things rule-based and binary. So we're going to be looking at this as a potential entry. So remember the screenshot I showed you earlier on where we had a bearish trend, and then we saw price then reverse, create a change of character. All right, this is what's happened just here. So let's mark this out. We have our... I call it an SMS, a shift in market structure, but it's the same thing as a chart. You know, we just price reversing from bearish to bullish or vice versa. We can then see we've had a break of structure underneath. Now, this is referred to as our liquidity sweep. So it's grab that liquidity from this low and also the Asia low. So we've then seen prices reacting here. Now, it's interesting to know what is price reacting to? If it's reacting to absolutely nothing, then we might see this as maybe a fake change of character and we might not see price continuing in the direction we are looking for so it's important to have a look to see is this reacting to something so we're going to zoom out we're going to have a look over to the left let me just draw a horizontal line so it's a bit easier to see so there's our horizontal line we can see where we've reacted to there 
Now let's look over here to the left. So yeah, we can see there's a fair value gap and there is an order block around this area here. Now there's a couple of ways we can look at our order blocks. We can either be very strict and rigid to looking at the last sell before the buy, but we're not really focused on having the precise order blocks marked out. So all I'm going to look at is this small area of consolidation, this entire region here, uh, because one, we always tapped into this fair value gap and two, it covers this small area of consolidation. All right, I do have a video about order block variations. It doesn't really play a major role within the DRS strategy, but if it's something you want to have a look at, I will leave a timestamp in the video for you to have a look at that at a later date. So let's drag this POI across. There we have it. Right, let's zoom in. We can get rid of this blue line now. Let's zoom into here. What we can see is prices reacted to this POI. We've seen a nice shift in market structure or change of character, and price is now trying to commit to higher pricing. So this is where we can now start looking for our entry. So what we're going to do, we are going to place our entry on the very edge of this fair value gap. Okay, and now remember the rules up to the right here. We need a minimum of five pips. So at the moment, we've got 3.6, so we need to extend this to the five pip mark, which also gives us a little bit of breathing space if we do see this fair value gap here tapping into. So we're going to be targeting a one to two and nothing more, nothing less. So we need to drag this up and we need to identify now, do we have a suitable target? Many people place so much emphasis on looking at where their entry is going to be and not placing any attention at all on where their target is going to be. So you need to plan the exit of your trade in as much detail as you do planning the entry. So a one to two target will be about here. Now, do we have much of a reason for price to push higher towards our target? We wanna be looking for a reason for price to hit this area. And if there's no reason, if we can't find a reason for it to do that, then there's no trade. Quite simply, if there's no reason for your trade to play out, then why take that trade? So there's a few things we can look at here. We do have a fair value gap up here, and we also have another point of interest around this point as well. So this is something that can gravitate price towards that area, okay? But we may price stalling at this point and potentially reversing. But do we have something else that could attract price further above that in order for our take profit to be hit? Well, quite simply, there's the Asia high. Session highs and lows, whether it's Asia highs, uh, Asia lows, highs London lows, these still offer liquidity points that we can use as targets. So we have two points that can draw price towards uh, the upside, favor of our trade. This is fair value gaps, POI and the Asia high. If we zoom out a little bit, we might be able to see a couple more bits. Um, a very insignificant value gap around here. I'm not really gonna hold much significance or that. Uh, there is another point of interest just here. Not all that significant. It doesn't really look like a um an amazing looking order block to look for but it's still there nonetheless all right we are not looking for the perfect order blocks we're just using things as a target that we can say right price is likely going to come to this region whether it responds to that or not it doesn't really matter because if our take profit is here we're going to be able to trade anyway so right let's place this order use an fx replay you can press alt and b and then we can go in to save this trade so we just make sure we are risking one percent um, position size, okay, we don't need to worry about it. It does it automatically. Take profit, stop loss, five and 10, perfect. Right, we can now place that trade. So we know we're gonna advance price forwards and what we've then had happen is another fair value gap has formed. So when this happens, we will always use the most recent fair value gap. So if you have more than one consecutive fair value gap, we will use the most recent one. Now, if you have a break in that leg, so for example, we have this fair value gap here, and then we have this bearish candle, and then after that, we then have new fair value gaps forming. This is where we would use the most recent ones, and we won't really use anything to do with this one. So we're gonna delete this order. We are now going to amend the trade. We're going to use the edge of this fair value gap, and remember, we need a minimum of five pips. But there we go. Five pips stop, okay, and it gives it a breathing space here. Now, if, for example, candle one is just here and hypothetically this was a five pip stop loss we would need to make sure our stop loss covers the low of candle one here okay we will show you a couple of examples of that as we progress forward all right but in this situation we need a minimum of five pips so we cannot use candle one because it would be below five pips as the minimum so five pip stop loss there we go uh, and now let's see where that brings us to for our target so let's just type it in manually there we go all right, now, as you can see, we still have a decent target, okay? We still aim for Asia high, so if the Asia high is reached, 
we're in a good position there. Our take profit is likely going to be hit with that situation. So Alt and B, let's place this order back on. Now, with this fair value gap, we can see the second fair value gap, we've had that displacement candle pushing up and the next candle after this is closed below the high of this candle. So this is more likely now to have this trade triggered very, very soon. Price not run away without us. So let's advance this forwards. Yet yeah, we can see we have been filled. We've also been filled in at the lower fair value gap here, but the position is now open. So let's advance this forwards. Okay, right, we've broken past this high, so that's a very good sign that we are committing to higher pricing now. And there we go, we have a take profit, a, a nice one to two taken right there. Now, after you've back tested every single trade, make sure you take a journal or a screenshot of it and put it somewhere like maybe a Notion document. I will leave a link for a Notion template in the description below, or you can use an Excel spreadsheet, whatever works well for you, but just make sure you journal everything. Just take a screenshot, the little camera symbol up here. So nice one to two taken there. We're now going to move on to the New York session. Right, so so far, the day has been relatively bullish, okay? This shift in market structure has reacted very nicely to this point of interest down here. One thing we are going to make a note of is even when we're back testing, we're gonna be keeping an eye out for high impact news. So we have ISM manufacturing PMI, might be a bit of a mover. It's not as significant as NFP or interest rates, but we still need to be cautious just in case something does come out quite different. So let's advance the candles forward a couple so we can see what's going on here. And we've got a little bit of a spike here. Uh, now let me move this indicator to the background because what we can see, let me just turn this off, is there is a large wick here which is being covered by that silver bullet indicator line. Ooh, there we go. All right, so it is difficult to see that, but you can see if we just hover over the cur hover over the bar, we can see that wick is on there. So let's move forwards. Let's see what price is going to do around this point. Now we do have a bearish fair value gap just there. Now let's have a look. We haven't really had a change of character. Price is still currently bullish. So at the moment, I don't think you really want to be trying to fight against the trend just because we've got a bearish fair value gap. So if we start seeing some more momentum pushing down, maybe breaking past a low, I'll be interested in getting involved. Okay, so nothing is there of interest in that trading session, and that's fine, okay? Not every trading session is going to present a trade, and if that's the case, we simply move on and wait for the next trade setup. So go to the next day. We're going to go to the London session. And let's have a quick look. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing really happened at that point. Potentially you might be enough to squeeze a one to two up to this low, but we want a little bit more clarification that price is actually wanting to commit in that direction. We don't just jump into a trade because there's a fair value gap. Okay. Right. So let's have a look at this trading day. We can see we're now on the 2nd of May above our Asia session. We can see uh, price has pushed up and it's failed to break past this daily high. So this is the Frankfurt session pushing to the upside. We have failed to break past this. So what's going to be interesting now to look out for is when London opens, does London see a run on this previous day high? If it does, we could then look to see if it's going to be a liquidity sweep and price reverses from that point, or if price is going to comfortably trend above that, we can start looking for continuation long. So let's open up this session and let's see how the market is going to behave at this point. Okay, we've got a bit of push up. Okay, we do have a bullish fair value gap, but right now, Potentially, if this is going to just work, play out as an Asia sweep trade, we might still see price pushing further down. So I'm not really interested in taking this just yet. Okay, right, we wicked to pass. Um, yeah, we wicked past this. Still not breaching that daily high. And there we go. Okay, right, we're not going to get involved. Okay, because we do have liquidity resting above. If we have a reason for our trade to fail relatively soon, then we cannot be getting involved in a trade because if we were going to take a short at this point, it's very likely that we could potentially see price push up, take that daily high before it then continues pushing down. So let's move on to the next session. We're going to go to the New York session just here. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, yeah, we still did not daily high, and that's fine. It's not a guarantee that's going to happen, but we don't want to be putting ourselves in a position where we could end up becoming liquidity because we are trying to force and rush into a trade too early. Right, so we've had price pushing further down, and um, it does look like there's a little bit of a reaction going on here. Nothing of interest just yet. So let's open this up. We do have a bearish fair value gap just here. Now, right now, what we can see is is there a reason for this fair value gap to work out? Now, if we look to the left, we can see that there is a very clear and clean POI just over here. So let's mark this out because just because we have a value gap here, 
it's not going to make much logical sense trying to trade deeper into a POI because that area might still then uh, be responded to and price reacting from it. So remember how we saw this POI reacting to. Again, we're not guaranteed to see those reactions. We are not looking to trade off the POI, but if we do see that reaction and price is trending in the direction we are looking to trade, then let's get involved. So let's just wait to see if this POI fails or if it it's respected we could then start looking to try and plan an entry and also this fair value gap would not have been valid okay because candle one is outside the window so let's just see what happens here okay we are starting to see push a little bit higher up um okay so that fair value gap be filled mm, okay push price forward a little bit more okay right so now this is a little bit of an aggressive um view on this but if we look at this candle we didn't really see a change of character or an sms at this point all we had this candle do was wick above this high so this high here is what's responsible for creating this low all right now this low is now responsible for creating these highs they're not confirmed as highs just yet because we're still in the process of building them all right but it's still responsible for breaking past the previous high now it's not until this candle just here is when we've had that candle closure closing above a structural high or a low is showing that there's a bit of commitment that we want to continue in that direction if it was just a wick we could potentially see more chance of price reversing and pushing the other way. So now we have that candle closure, it's going to be a safer option for us to be looking for a long on one of these fair value gaps. So we have two fair value gaps here. Let me just uh, move this so you can see it better. So we've got a fair value gap there. It's very small, but it's still there. Then we have another fair value gap down here. So remember the rules. We need a minimum of five pips or we're going to be using a low of candle one. So because we've got two fair value gaps, we don't have three candles forming these fair value gaps now we have four okay so we've got candle one two candle three for this fair value gap okay and then candle four for these together now if there was no fair value gap here but then we had another fair value gap forming here that's going to show that there's a break in those fair value gaps and that counter restarts again we will then go from candle one two three so we need to still put our stop loss on the low of candle one so we can't use the minimum of um, five pips stop loss and this is where the stop loss is now going to widen a bit and where we might then need to observe a maximum stop loss of 20 pips so we're using a 10.9 pip stop loss here so let's just place this in here so what's that 21.8 have I done my math right there we go right so now we've started to identify a potential trade setup we now need to make sure that we have a suitable reason for price to come to our take profit if we don't have that the trade is not valid we won't be taking it so the target is here now what do we see to the left we have a fair value gap here it's partly been uh refilled okay we've had a little bit of tap into it but there's also this point up here we might be able to look at this as a point of interest or an order block it's not like the most textbook looking at order blocks but it's still something that we might see price come back up to to mitigate but also it's also a swing high all right so it's a high point that potentially could be taken as liquidity reducing the chances of this order block actually working out so Either way, we are still in a comfortable position that if this POI gets tapped into or the high gets swept, our take profit is most likely going to be hit in that situation. So, Alt and B, uh, risking 1%, and yeah, 1, 2, let's go. Right, so we'll advance this forwards. Haven't been filled in yet. Okay, now we have. So we've come down and we've refilled most of the previous fair value gap. So this is why we have our stop loss covering this one as well. Okay, we've then had a bit of a push up. Okay, we are struggling to close up this high at the moment, so potentially we might still see price reverse and push against us. Uh, no, okay, right, now we're closing above here. Got a little bit of an impulse. There we go. Right, so we haven't quite hit TP yet. Now I get this question so many times whenever I share my trades on Instagram is, if this was to come back and hit stop loss, I get so many comments saying, oh, you should have set stop loss to break even. Now I've gathered five years worth of data across EURUSD and UK100 and a little bit on the DAX as well. I've scrutinized every single one of those trades that are taken and more often than not, we would see price potentially come down to our break even, maybe into a little bit of drawdown and go off to TP. Now it doesn't mean this is guaranteed. This happens more often than it doesn't. But there is still the possibility we are going to see price come down and hit our stop loss. But if we was going to set stop loss to break even, the frequency of these trades that 
continue up to our take profit, we are going to miss out on those trades and it would actually damage our win rate. So we are going to leave this alone. It's not until six o'clock in the evening UK time where we'll be start thinking about getting stop loss to break even. So we're going to continue advancing price forwards. Let's see, okay, we are starting to slow down a little bit here. So we're getting closer to that six o'clock mark. So I'm just going to put a little uh, a line on here. So it's a visual representation that if price gets to this point, then we can move our stop loss to break even. And okay, we didn't need to. Okay, we took a take profit. It's another 2% trade so far, 4% up. So moving on to the next day, we're going on to the London session. Okay, so London session is just here. So let's advance the candles forward a little bit. Let's just open the session up and just let it start showing what it wants to do. Okay, right. Okay, right. So we've got push down here. So this Asia session is probably not the most ideal uh, setup to be looking for at the moment because at the moment, London has opened in the middle of the Asia session. So at that point, London hasn't really got a clear direction just yet. All right. Even though we are seeing bearish candles forming, this could likely be just to take some liquidity from the Asia low. So what we're going to be observing now is if this Asia low is taken, what happens if or when that happens? Do we see price accelerating to the upside? If we do, we can start looking to take a trade and potentially targeting somewhere around here. If we don't, then we'll just sit on our hands and wait patiently until a setup arises. So let's advance this forwards. Okay, we're reacting to something down here. There's nothing really all that significant. We are actually creating some equal lows as well. So this is also potentially an area that we might see uh, liquidity being taken later on. I'd say they're more relative equal lows because they're not bang on exactly the same. So let's advance price forward. I'd be more comfortable if we saw a sweep of liquidity. Now, just because we've got a fair value up there, we could be putting ourselves in a funny situation that if this liquidity is to be taken, we're just going to be sitting in a, uh, a losing trade straight away. I'm not going to get involved in that. I would rather wait for something that is textbook and more ideal. So even though price did push up eventually, we don't want to be jumping into something where there's resting liquidity right below our stop loss. All right because we're just going to set ourselves up for failure. So no trade there. Happy with that. Let's move on to the New York session. Right. So uh, this would have been NFP. Yep. It was the first Friday of the month there. So we've had NFP. Now, when it comes to news events with the DRS, the window timings are usually in a safe place either side of high impact news events. So NFP is usually released at half past one UK time on a Friday. Then we often have something at three o'clock. So we've got PMI here as well. So we've got another high impact news event about to happen just there. So because we need a minimum of three candles to form our fair value gap, by the time this news event has done what it needs to do, we are already seeing price start to slow down and get a breather after any news impulses. Okay, so let's advance this forwards. Let's see what we have going on now. Okay, so there's no fair value gap right now. The news event from this candle, let me just turn off this because then we can see what's actually happened with this PMI here. We've got a wick pushing down, we've got a wick pushing up. So right now, we've pretty much got a trading range between this point and this point, all right? So at that time, there's not really a clear direction of what price wants to do. Yes, we've got some candles pushing to the downside, does that want to be sustained? We don't know. All right, we are still inside this trading range. So it's very, very likely we're not going to get a trade inside this trading window just yet. So let's turn this back on. Let's advance it forwards. Okay, yeah, we're still going to be inside that range. So nothing of interest there. And there still wasn't even a fair value gap. So that's fine. We'll move on to the next day. Let's go on to London again. All right, so this is now after the weekend. We're now looking at Monday the 6th. Okay, so quite similar to the Friday here where price was actually opening in the center of the asia session we want to see a little bit of direction before we start jumping into a trade so let's open this up and see what direction london is trying to push in okay so we've got some fair value gaps but we're not going to be interested in those until we've seen something that is going to indicate prices wanting to go one way or the other you might be thinking well price is actually pushing to the upside which is which it is all right but we want to be careful of is if this asia high is taken price pushes up takes that liquidity and then pushes the other way, we're going to be putting ourselves in a dodgy situation by taking a trade off of these fair value gaps. So it's not a requirement to always wait for a liquidity sweep, but if we have resting liquidity right near our entry, we want to just sit on our hands, be a bit patient and wait until something like that has happened. So let's advance this forwards. Let's keep an eye on what's going on. Okay, we haven't taken that yet. 
Okay. A relatively shallow uh, London Open. It hasn't really exceeded the trading range of the Asia session. All right. Quite often we tend to see the London Open will exceed the trading range of Asia, um, you know, relatively quickly. But it's a bit of a slow session start to that. So not to worry. We will move on to the afternoon. And there we go. Even if we was going to take a trade off these fair value gaps, all right. Let's just remove this um, again. We can see even if our stop loss was somewhere down here, we would have been taken out for a stop loss. And this is why we like to wait until we see a clear direction for uh, our trade setups. Okay, right. So we've had quite a bullish day. All right, we do have some imbalances left behind. Fair value gap here, fair value gap here. All right, so we are it does look like we are reacting to something over here so let's draw a horizontal line across and let's have a look to the left and see what is going on over here to the left and it's looking like um all right we do have that wick over here so there's potentially something again let me just take this off you can see there's this wick here all right potentially it might even be a support and resistance level all right we're not going to go all that far back to try and force a narrative we can't see anything clear that we are reacting from and we don't use multi time frame analysis we don't want to overcomplicate things because we might start changing the time frames and start talking ourselves into a different trade perspective when all we're really looking for is a relatively short term in and out type of trade for example we might see a bear value gap and we can target down here now if we don't see a bearish fair value gap and we see price trending and pushing above these highs then we can trade with the order flow so we're going to look for one of those two situations if a setup occurs then we'll go for it but yeah, we can't see anything clear that we're reacting to from here. So let's keep an eye on this. Okay, mostly sideways at the moment. Okay, there's a fair value gap just here. But again, I think we are still not really committing to anything. Now this low here is actually an internal low. So, we, so even if we were to pass this low, it, it's probably not going to be all convincing. Right, now we have had a tap into this fair value gap just here. Now we barely had a candle closure below this internal low, so it's not really clear right yet, especially with seeing these wicks as well. Even if we were going to try and get into this, we might be looking at these wicks and think, right, it's going to push higher. So it's not that clear right now. So I like to say, if in doubt, just sit it out. All right. Um, but yeah, we can see okay nothing we want to be getting even just there now even if this does continue pushing down towards a you know hypothetical tp because it's still not clear in the moment we don't take it all right try not to get fomo with this strategy or trading in general so even if you don't trade this strategy and you do something else don't look at something that could have been and think oh i should have gotten into that okay so london session for the next day we have taken the asia low Let's just advance price forward. Let's see what we're going to happen from here. Okay, now there is a point of interest just here. Now we might potentially see the reaction from this. So I think if we was, if we was going to see this area fail and um, price pushing higher, we might start looking for a long, but I don't think we're really going to be able to squeeze a one to two before the Asia high, unless we have something more significant above there. Not really, okay. So let's just zoom out a little bit. What has this low here done? This low is actually taking a previous day low, which is a significant point of liquidity. All right, so this it could indicate that we might see pumping up from here. Not a guarantee, but it's a it's a confluence that we do like to see with this. So let's just advance this open and see where London is intending to go. All right, we've just seen a lot of wicks here. Nothing really of interest there. Now we do have a fair value gap at this point, um, but it kind of defeats the, or it kind of counters the narrative of what we see here. So yeah, nothing clear. Let's go on to the New York session. Okay, yeah, right. So we did see that daily low taken. If we just zoom out, daily low here has been taken. We've then seen a bit of a bullish day um, since this low has been taken. So we've seen price pushing to the upside. We also have a daily high over here. So potentially, we might be able to see uh, a drawn liquidity for this and potentially use this as a target. Okay, so... Um... We are seeing a bit of a reaction. So if we don't see price reacting or even taking this daily high, let's just have a look over here. Um, so this cluster of candles, we've got a bit of consolidation going on here. This is something I do reference in the order block variations video from the beginners SMC course. So feel free to have a look at that if you want. But yeah, we do have a cluster of candles here. Let's look at this one. So we've got this consolidation. Let's just move this over to the left. Let's have a look. What is reacting to this? We've wicked above it. Push away. Now, if we see a strong reaction from this, I'd be interested in taking a short there. So let's see. Okay, right. We've got a displacement candle there. Right now, let's start 
planning a potential exit if we are able to get into a trade. So there's a point of interest just here with a fair value gap overlapping. Right now in this situation, all right, I will only be considering a trade if I can meet this as a target. If the target breaches and goes past this, then I won't be interested at all. So let's advance this forwards. Okay, this is a nice fair value gap. All right, we've had this candle close above the low of this one. So let's size this up for a trade. Put that on there. So we need a minimum of five pips. Now, usually we'll go for candle one, but as you can see, it's 3.3. .3, so we need to stick to the rules and have a minimum of five pips. This gives us breathing space in case spreads widen for any reason. And oh, there we go. Look at this. Perfect. And this is looking like a nice textbook setup. Now, one thing we don't have is we don't have a change of character or an SMS. Right. Because we're seeing a strong reaction from this, I'm happy to get involved with this. We do have a liquidity point where we can see price pushing down towards here. Now, this is something that might confuse a lot of traders, and I really want to try and emphasize the point of this. Okay, If we look at the order flow pushing up like so, even if we are taking a short at this point and using this here as our target, all right, if the order flow is going to continue bullish, we're still trading with the trend. Okay? All right, even though we are going against the trend in this direction, all right, if we were trying to trade down to here or maybe try and take the Asia low or the London low, then fair enough. Yeah, we are definitely trying to fight against that trend. But okay, every single um, trading leg or we have called market phases. So we have that continuation phase. We then have a pullback phase. We have a continuation. We have a pullback. We are trading the pullback whilst we are still trying to stay within the trend. So let's move this line here. Let's get rid of that. So happy to take this trade target is reasonable and like i said if the target was further below we would not be getting involved in this so let's advance the candles forwards still not in the position yet might not get filled in this right so it looks like we are filled into this trade we've just wicked into it on the very very last candle all right so this candle even though it's the five past four candle because it's on the edge of the trading window we still use this one so let's advance this forwards okay we're in a bit of drawdown now very close to our stop loss now in this situation um, if you do not have a raw spread account, potentially you could have been taken out for a loss there. But with raw spreads, most brokers and most prop firms these days do offer raw spreads. So this is a situation where if you have a raw spread account, you would have been safe. If you didn't, you may have been taken out with spreads. All right, this advances forwards. Okay, we're pushing a little bit lower. We've got a wick here at this point. So we still haven't come down to this fair value gap. Okay, right, now we've seen a closure below this. We've got a fair value gap being filled. Okay, we're getting close to our stop loss to break even. And there we go. Right, another trade taken there and another trade won. So we've got 6% gains by following our trading rules. Okay, yeah, so so far we've got 6% gains. We've taken three trades. All three of those are winners. Now, I do want to emphasize and I really want to stress this point. Throughout this video, you've seen three winning trades. That means so far in this video, we've got 100% win rate. Now, this is not a true reflection of normal trading, okay? We do go through phases where we have winning streaks, maybe win three, four, five trades in a row, but we also do have losing phases. So what I do not want to do is I don't want you to sit there and think, right, oh, this is 100% win rate because it's not, all right? The average win rate for this strategy is around about 55 to 60%. All right, now with a one to two target, that is more than enough to be profitable and consistent. Okay, it's a very stress-free approach to trading. And I just want to be fully transparent with you here that this is not a 100% win rate. Now, we have seen three winning trades in a row. It's not always like that in the real world. So before we finish off, let's quickly go and have a look at some analytics from the data that has been collected through backtesting for this strategy. And you can see a clearer visual representation of the performance of the DRS. So here we have the entirety of 2023 that has been back tested. And if I open this, the analytics, we can see what the win rate looks like. So we've got 56% win rate. Now this is including break even trade. So that does drop the win rate down a little bit, but it's not really a problem. You can still see the strategy is profitable by following these rules. Okay. 140% for the year, which is phenomenal with just a one to two. Now we don't need to be targeting these massive one to 20 trades, one to fifties and stuff like that. All right, because a lot of trades like that, whilst they do happen, they're far and few between, and you are likely going to take a lot of losses in the meantime. And it can be very damaging for psychology. As you can see, the equity curve here is nice and steady. Yeah, we do have a couple of points where 
we do see maybe a few dips, like a few losing streaks here and there, all right? But overall, throughout the longer period of time, you can see that the strategy does play out. So let's scroll down. Feel free to pause this video as I'm showing through these statistics and feel free to scrutinize this as much as you like. Okay, then if we scroll down a little bit further here, we can see our performance per hour. As we can see, the two trading windows is where most of our trades are taken. If we scroll down, we can see what days are more profitable than others. Tuesday tends to be a slightly better day, but not by a great margin. If we scroll down, we can also see a nice heat map of the quantity of trades taken throughout the year. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment, ask me below. I'm a lot more active on Instagram, so if I don't respond to your questions straight away on YouTube, then feel free to drop me a message on Instagram and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. If you want to learn more about the DRS strategy and you want to get involved with the community, then hit the link in the description below. You'll be able to follow all my trades live as and when I take them in the live trading floor within the server, which happens every single day. And you're more than welcome to cancel your membership at any point with no obligation at all. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful and we'll see you in the next one.